how do you set up a filtration schedule for your pool pump? Like, I mean, you, you kind of get it. You have a new variable speed pump. Maybe even the person that sold and installed it for you made an initial schedule for you, but you kind of feel like you're not optimizing the schedule here. How do you go about doing this? Well, this is something that I cover extensively with my swimming pool equipment test lab back here, and I have all kinds of YouTube videos about different filtration schedules for different applications, and I even have an online consulting service where people pay me and I'll design a, a filtration schedule for your pool. But a lot of people just want to know how to do it for themselves, and that's what this video is about. You know, when somebody contacts me to, to do this, there's a few key points that I'm looking at here, and I should mention that every swimming pool system is unique and swimming pool professionals exist for a reason. My number one endorsement would be to hire a local prep professional who can come in and evaluate your specific system in person. I can only speak in general terms here because every pool is built differently. Every pool is unique. But the starting point for me for a filtration schedule starts with the vol volume of your pool. We need to know that information. And it's not critical down to the, you know, maybe plus or minus 5% would be the ideal number that we're looking for here. So we need the volume of your pool. And basically the filtration schedule that you're going to design starts by knowing this because you need to know how much to filter, right? So if you have, we're gonna work with a nice round number here, a 10,000 gallon pool. So if you have a 10,000 gallon pool, how much do you need to pump per day? The answer is not 10,000. So if you pumped only 10,000 gallons a day through your filtration set in a 10,000 gallon pool, you have achieved approximately 63% of all of the water in your pool being filtered at least one time because a bunch of it gets filtered two and three times, some of it not at all. So the math behind this says at the third turnover of your pool volume, we're achieving approximately 95% of all the water in your pool. If you did a fourth one, that bumps it up to 98. I generally speaking, take three, 95% as all of the water in your pool. So that's the magic number. Whatever the volume of your pool is, times that by three, and that's the minimum amount that we need to attempt to filter every day. I should mention here that, you know, there's real world applications of what the average person actually does with their swimming pool. And that's a little bit different than the information I'm giving you here. Remember, I'm a pool specialist, like my pool is probably going to be set up and running different than what the average swimming pool is. So the average pool owner is probably turning over their pool volume one time per day, maybe 1.5 times per day, calling it good enough. Is it good enough? I don't know. That's up to you. There's going to be a little bit more chemical consumption. The water might not look as good as it is. I, I'm a fan of a 24-hour filtration schedule that equals three turnovers minimum of the pool volume daily. I think that gives you the most optimal results. And the reality is, is when you dial in this variable speed pump effectively, you're not paying extra for that. Like people have the mindset, you know, I've got this variable speed pump, I run it eight hours per day, you missed the, po the point entirely, because a variable speed pump, the real savings happen, the long hours at low speed operation. And it's because if I could just summarize it for you, I've got, again, tons of videos on the subject that you can look for. But to summarize, as you turn down the RPM of the motor, there is a non-linear drop in the power consumption. So round numbers here, right? So uh, 100 gallons per minute, max speed. If we turn the speed down by 50%, we probably are going to see a linear drop in the flow rate. We're probably going to end up around half that flow rate when we're running at half RPM. But the power didn't drop by half. The power dropped by about eight times and in most real world applications accounting for actual real world losses about five times a five times reduction in power for reducing the the rpm of the motor by half reducing the flow rate by half such that there is an advantage as you go lower it just gets more and more efficient per gallon so if you're only running your pool pump part of the day you're leaving meat on the bone where you could be running it longer hours at an even lower speed resulting at more economy per gallon of water filtered. It's worth mentioning here that usually speaking, water filters better at slower speeds. So that's a good thing too, right? You're getting a better quality filtration and it's costing you less to get there. So working with this number, three times the volume of the pool per day through the filtration set. Remember, this is just the minimum number. You can go as much more as you want. As long as it doesn't end up costing you a lot of money to run the pump, you should be happy with that. That's a good thing. And 
you know, for the amount of water that you're moving, most likely your current system is not set up optimally for efficiency. Most pool systems are. Most pool systems, like if you have a two inch plumbing system, very common size, and you've got a pretty big pump, two horsepower, three horsepower, you might be moving as much as 120 gallons per minute or more at any given time when the pump's at high speed. And the thing about it is, is you don't really need 120 gallons per minute, like pretty much ever. There's not, there's no advantage for you. Like every single part of your pool needs a certain amount of flow to do its thing. The skimmers need flow, a salt chlorinator needs flow, a pool heater needs flow. None of them need 120 gallons per minute. In fact, most of them aren't even rated to have that much water passing through them. So what's the magic number here? Well, just to kind of give you, the, and this is just round numbers here, but if you had two inch plumbing, what's the magic number for efficiency? The magic number is in or around 65 gallons per minute maximum. Beyond this amount in a two inch pipe, you're going to experience exponentially increasing efficiency losses, very dramatic efficiency losses to friction and turbulence from the fast moving water within the plumbing lines. And so if you have a two inch system, then you want to have your maximum speed 65 gallons per minute. Now, unless you have a flow meter installed in your system, you won't know what 65 gallons per minute is. You, will, you can only interact with the pump and you have pump RPM and that's it. You should install a flow meter. Installing a flow meter is like a speedometer on a car. Without one, it's really hard to know what you're doing here. You could make some estimations, but really to maximize your return on an investment of a variable speed pump, you need to know the flow at any given time. So I'm just going to continue using flow. And if you don't have a flow meter, you're not going to be able to do this. You could make estimations, but you should research installing a flow meter on your system. So 65 gallons per minute is the ideal maximum in a two inch system. And just to touch on it, uh, the pipe size on both sides of this, inch and a half, that number would be about about 38 to 40 gallons per minute and on two and a half inch pipe it would be about 90 gallons per minute now all of these pipes can exceed this amount for flow by a lot uh, inch and a half commonly up to and exceeding 80 gallons per minute two inch up to and exceeding 120 two and a half 140 150 and these numbers are just not needed for the average swimming pool it is pretty much exclusively efficiency loss that you're experiencing on the upper end there so what we've just done here in a roundabout way is we've established what your maximum speed is going to be. When you set a variable speed pump schedule, you want deviation in the schedule. You don't just want to set one speed and run it at that. There are some pools that would benefit from that, but the vast majority, you want a dynamic schedule. So we're going to need like high speed, medium speed, low speed. We just established the high speed. Whatever your trunk line is through the plumbing system, what, and by trunk line, I mean the single pipe which connects from pump to filter, filter to heater, heater to return manifold. So that pipe size, if you have a two inch pipe size, probably the most common for residential pools, 65 gallons per minute is your maximum speed. You can and could run it higher than that, but you probably don't need to. The skimmers don't need 65 or more gallons per minute. A heater turns on at usually 35 to 40 gallons per minute. Salt chlorinator, 15 to 20 gallons per minute. Most things would be running on a system at 65 gallons per minute and working just great. And it would be super efficient too. You wouldn't just be wasting a bunch of energy to friction loss within the plumbing line. So now that we've established the high speed, what you, you might be wondering, well, okay, we've established 65 gallons per minute, let's say that's equal to, I don't know, 2,500 RPM on this particular made up pump system that we're talking about here. How many hours would you run it at that speed? Well, this is going to come down to the calculation that we do for volume turnover. How big is your particular pool? How many hours will you have to run at 65 gallons per minute versus a medium speed versus a lower speed? Just to simplify things, I'm going to give you a very common example here. We're going to go with about four hours of operation at 65 gallons per minute. And this is just a starting point for building this filtration schedule. And then usually what I end up doing, usually, is whatever, you know, let's say we, we just said that we're going to do X many hours at the high speed operation. How many hours at mid speed? Normally, 
I just double the, the number of hours. If I'm doing four hours at high speed, 65 gallons per minute, my medium speed's probably going to be about eight hours of operation. And then the remainder of the 24 hour day, that will represent my low speed operation. So that now you have an idea for how the 24 hour schedule is going to go. We picked the high speed, we're going to do a handful of hours at high speed. And then we're going to double that number of hours for the medium speed and then whatever's left over for the 24-hour day will be the low speed when we add up this filtration total it needs to equal at minimum three times the volume of your pool if it doesn't equal three times the volume of your pool you got to retool these numbers a little bit right you might need if it's not enough you might need more hours at high speed if you've got you know way more filtration total than you were aiming for then you can try reducing on some of these numbers like you might not need 65 gallons per minute you could probably get away with 50 gallons per minute and that would represent a substantial reduction in the amount of power even just between 65 gallons uh, per minute and 50 gallons per minute so this is how you nickel and dime away at getting a very efficient cost effective filtration schedule for your pool we pick the high speed we pick the the gpm we pick the hours we about double that for the medium speed the rest of the 24 hour day at low speed so what's low speed we haven't really talked about that actually i guess we didn't talk about medium speed too 65 gallons per minute, 30 to 40 gallons per minute. Uh, if you have a heater, 40 gallons per minute. If you don't have a heater, 30 gallons per minute. That's my mid speed there. And then for low speed operation, I tend to come in around 15 to 20 gallons per minute. Again, depending on the system, you know, parameters. You know, if you had a salt chlorinator, I'm probably closer to 20 gallons per minute maybe even 25. If you don't have anything like that, I'm probably closer to 15 gallons per minute for the long hours of low speed operation. And you'll notice that the power consumption for that 15 gallons per minute will be scant. It will be tiny. It will be less than to run an incandescent light bulb. And you'll be getting 15 gallons per minute every day for like 12 hours through your filtration set. So that's really the key there. And when somebody says to me, I only run my variable speed pump eight hours a day, I'm just thinking there's so much potential here for savings. If you were to structure your, your flow and filtration schedule, like I've just said here, we where we have like high speed, but not too high, and then a little bit more at medium, and then long hours at low, like you end up filtering a ton of water at the end of the 24 hour day. All of your pool equipment received the flow for the time that it needed to, and then the pool itself is getting the long hours of uh, filtration of the low and slow approach. So it's kind of a best of both worlds because every day you're getting some higher speed for better diffusion. Your skimmers are going to active or be active, more active than at the lowest speed operation. But it's not just a you know low and slow 24-7. I feel like a lot of people take that approach. They just set like 1200 RPM and it's like 25 or 30 gallons a minute and that's it. And that's not enough for like a big in-ground pool. You need to have a dynamic schedule, some periods of time that things kind of ramp up and run. And I'll mention one more thing because this comes up a lot. Does it hurt your pump to run it 24 hours a day? Because a lot of people say that, well, I don't want to, I paid a lot for this pump. I don't want to damage it. And it's, I think it's actually the opposite of that. The, the off and on, the priming cycles, this is when mechanical damage happens to the pump. Also, high speed operation where a lot of heat is generated, these are the things which damage electric motors. Low and slow steady operation does not damage these pumps. These are continuous duty motors that are designed for this application. And in theory, you could just run it at maximum speed 24 seven, and it's totally within the manufacturer's specifications. It's just not in your interest to do so. So it would you know, cost a lot of money, but also all that mechanical movement and heat generation causes wear and damage and deficiency over time. Low and slow operation of a variable speed pump 24 hours a day is the key to longevity, in fact. So it's both the most cost effective for you, but it's also going to equal the most longevity with this equipment that you've invested in. So it's, it's really a best of both worlds situation here. So there you have it. I gave you all of my secrets there on how I structure a, a filtration schedule. Maybe I just want to mention one more thing because this, this I guess, would be important. Let's say you have more demanding systems, like a, you've got an electric heat pump. It needs a certain amount of flow, but it also needs to run for long hours to do its thing. 
where you would make up for that would be in your mid-range speed. So remember I mentioned before, if you had a heater, I'd choose like 40 gallons a minute versus 30. So you might end up needing to have elongated hours at that mid-range speed to make sure that you have enough time for your electric heat pump to do its thing. But don't forget your high speed operation, it's gonna be working as well. So you've got your mid range and your high speed operation for something like an electric heat pump to be doing its thing. And then you still have the low and slow long hours at low speed for your most cost effective filtration. But that's how I would account for these peripheral items that have very specific or unique flow. It's usually that mid range, I cater that to those peripheral pieces. So again, those are all my tricks, that's how I, you know, figure out how to do filtration schedules for different swimming pools. And there's different approaches, things like that. But the one that I'm describing here is probably the most cost, cost effective considering we are not compromising in any way on this pool. There's never any stagnant water. Everything's always moving. It's a dynamic filtration schedule, really making the best of both worlds for cost effectiveness, but also the quality of the filtration that you're getting. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.